Wait, maybe two more minutes. And Jennifer, you mean to share them specifically with Emily, right? Um, I guess I was thinking that we could share them in the chat, but if well, but if, if people want to keep them anonymous, just send correct. Them to okay. Let me delete that message. Emily, will you put your email in the chat then? No, if they just chat, they just message her through Zoom and oh. place their email in the chat, then she can just copy them all and then we'll have record. Gotcha. I'll, I'm happy to type that out if you like. There's a little two button on the bottom and it'll send it directly to me. Yeah, thank you. I've actually never used that. Hi, everybody. Didn't mean to do that. Josh, do you mind pinging um, Michaela? Oh, no, here she is. <laughs> Hello. Hi. What we have designs to get input on those designs. Well, should we get started? So those mm -hmm. are the really We're currently recording, and I'll just real quick. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending. We are super excited to be here. It has been, um, for some people, a long time coming and for others a very very long time coming so we are we are grateful and excited to get to be here tonight with you all to share what we get to share um, a couple of housekeeping type items is we would like to try to keep record of who's attended and in order to for us to be able to kind of verify your feedback form which we'll get to later in the presentation if if you would please enter your email address in the chat um, directly to Emily. If you click the chat button at the bottom of Zoom, it'll pop up. And then at the bottom of that chat, you can click on the everyone button. Jennifer, maybe, would you mind just pulling that? If Will, will it show on your screen if you pull it up and do that? I don't know if it will or not, but if you go to the bottom of the Zoom window and you hit the chat button, the window will pop up. At the bottom of that, you'll see a two and then everyone, if you click the everyone button and do a drop down, you can select Emily's name and you can put your email in there. And then we can have, that way you can keep your email um, protected from public eyes and go on, so on and so forth. Yes, can you see that little chat box? No, it, it looks mm -hmm. like it went to your other screen. It's all right, I think people will figure it out. Okay. So if you want to pull the presentation back up, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Also, hi everyone, I'm Dole Grabenik. I should have introduced myself first, city engineer from Manitou Springs and have been the project manager for this job um, for quite a while now and got to um, oversee the partial demolition. And then, and then the, the task force was uh, a terrific partner in getting us to this night. Everyone will have their chance to introduce themselves. And then Susan, if you don't mind going to the next slide.
I said me, sorry. sorry. Um, all right, just a quick agenda for the night, what to expect. We'll do some, we've already done some welcoming and we'll work on some introductions. We're gonna talk about the project background, kind of how we got here, the history. We're gonna highlight some of the previous community engagement. We are gonna hit the um, big selling points of the evening, the, the main events, and that's in the site alternatives and also in the architectural alternatives. Um, we intend to do some breakout discussions, um, looking at some numbers, maybe we'll have one breakout group right now. And then we'll kind of we'll kind of come back together, do a brief recap, and then we'll kind of share with you our visions for the future. And then we'll wish everyone a, a safe travels as they walk back to their kitchen. And the next slide, Jennifer, please. Okay, so um, I'm just a small part of the Hiawatha Gardens Task Force. And uh, I think it would be a terrific time. I know you'll hear from um, one or two of them tonight, but if it'd be okay with the task force members, if you guys would just introduce yourselves real quick and just for the ease, I'll just kind of call on you who's in order of my um, display here. So Susan, if you wouldn't mind going first. Hi everybody, I'm Susan Watkins, a member of the Hiawatha Gardens Task Force number three. Thank you, Susan. And then Anne, I have you next. Nancy, if you want to go while Anne is getting unmuted. Oh, there she is. Sorry. <laughs> Anne Nichols, member of the task force. Sorry about that. Thank you, Anne. And I'm Nancy Fortune, also a um, member. And then Emily. I'm Emily, and I'm the GIS um, analyst for the city of Manitou Springs and on the task force. Thank you, Emily. And then Carl. Good evening, everyone. Carl Stang here, a uh, member as well. Next on my list is Alan. Um, hi, I'm Alan Delwich, also a member. And then Tweed, I see you on there as well. Yes, um, Tweed Gazaya, task force member. And then I, uh, Denise, if you wanted to say hi, and then... And then uh, Roy, I see that you're on too, if you also wanted to. Roy Cheney, Deputy City Administrator. And we had a few more members are not here right now. Um, so it was a big group effort that helped us really get to this point. So thank you everyone. And the, the consultant and their team, they'll introduce themselves here in just a minute. Okay, so on the screen here, you'll see um, hopefully everyone has had a chance to review this virtual information center. This really, this presentation tonight is really just complimentary to the information center. Um, there really is not any new information tonight. It's really just kind of explaining and walking through and um, kind of communicating uh, some of the reasons and rationale and also to facilitate some conversation about, about the layouts and things like that. Jennifer, if you don't mind. Okay, <clears throat> couple couple of things on the night. You know, we're going to cover. I, I would say we're going to cover quite a bit of information, and um, but we want to give everyone a chance to ask their questions and to ask for clarifications when we kind of break out into the into the um, breakout sessions. So write your questions down. If you need to put questions in the chat, that's a good place for them too. We can keep them and have them. Um, like I said, there'll be a lot of information. The graphics are available in the virtual information center. And then uh, towards the end of this, uh, we have a online response form that uh, we're looking for every uh, visitor uh, attendee to fill out. <clears throat> uh, the, the response form is a little lengthy, primarily because there's a lot of options and we just really wanted to kind of do this effort thoroughly and completely one time and not not leave this experience with um, this data and have a lot of holes and, and like, well, what did they mean by this? And we didn't get great data in this. So please fill it out, take your time. And uh, that, that information will be very helpful to us as we move forward. Jennifer, please. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Jennifer Davis. I'm with BVH Architecture. Um, we were selected to work on the first couple phases of programming and thinking about how the Hiawatha Gardens can be rehabilitated and working with DHM, who's done a bulk of the site planning that you'll see. So I'll have um, Ed, Michaela, and Josh uh, introduce themselves. And we're just a um, small part of the team that has been working on these projects. Everyone, Ed, do you want to go? Is, this is Ed Vidlack, BVH Architecture. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michaela Kaiser. I'm a senior associate and landscape architect at DHM Design. And uh, my name is Josh Spinner, and I'm with DHM Design as well. So when we break up into, um, if we're going to break up into small groups later, those will be the four people that will um, be on the design team and kind of guide us through. But you'll hear us speak to the to the both the site plan and the architectural plans that we're going to show you later. Susan, would you walk us through the project background? Yeah, happy to. You know, the task force thought it might be helpful to provide a little bit of information about the past and the, the recent history of the Hiawatha Garden site before we discuss possibilities for its future. So I just want to highlight a little bit of, of um, the background on the Hiawatha Garden site. The first structure on the site was um, a public resort for gentlemen. And you can see in the lower mm -hmm. corner there that great looking building uh, that was built in 1890. Unfortunately, it was destroyed by fire in 1920. Um, next slide, please, Jennifer. And then, in 1897, an adjacent dance hall was, dance hall pavilion was um, constructed. And that's the building, that's part of the building that you see on the site today. Um, it was originally built in 18, or in 1897 and some additions were made to the building in 1920. Um, next slide, please. That the dance hall pavilion has served a lot of uses and entertained in various ways hundreds of thousands of people. Maybe that's an overstatement. Hundreds, if not thousands, of people in Manitou Springs over the years. Uh, it started out as a dance hall and a music venue, hosted big bands of all sorts, um, and a bunch of famous musicians like Rudy Valentino and Duke Ellington and Jimmy Dorsey and all of those wonderful musicians from the past. Um, it's also, interestingly enough, served as a winter facility for high school sports teams in Manitou Springs. Uh, for a while, it was a country music venue hosting such stars as Patsy Montana on her guitar. Um, it even served as a bowling alley at one time. Um, the, most, the more recent history had it hosting a couple of restaurants. Uh, one I think was a, a rib place and the other was Chajin Alami that featured belly dancing. So it has a really colorful history. Uh, next slide, please. The city purchased the site, the building and the, the site in 2016. Um, and since then the building has remained vacant and the site has primarily been used as a parking lot and the transit access point. Jennifer, if, yeah, if we can go two slides, that'd be great. Um, in 2017 and 2018, community discussions began about how the Hiawatha Garden site might possibly be used and a couple of task forces were formed. Um, and in 2020, the Manitou Springs City Council passed a resolution, formed a third task force and passed a resolution that provided this direction to the task force. Their job was to investigate and implement the restoration of historic aspects of Hiawatha Gardens with the goal to establish it for community use, including but not limited to a multimodal transportation hub. So that was the charge given to the task force. And then in 2021, city council reaffirmed that charge uh, by passing an another resolution. Next slide, please. 
one of the first tasks of the um, taken on by the task force was to make sure that the that the remaining dance hall structure was was worth saving and that it was structurally sound and a good would make a good public investment. So um, the city hired a contractor to demolish the non-historic and the structurally unsound portions of the building, and then had an engineer and an architect assess the building, the remaining structure that, that is on the site today. And their assessment basically reported out that the dance hall building's in good structural shape considering its age. So over the past few months, the demolition has been complete, the site has been stabilized, and the building was wrapped and is protected as you see in the, in the lower photograph there. Next slide, please, Jennifer. Um, in nine, 2019, the Manitou Springs City Council identified some givens for the Hiawatha Gardens transformation project. And these givens have been recently updated to reflect current conditions. And I won't read them all to you, but they, the, the givens set the parameters for the Hiawatha Gardens decisions that will be made. And they, they um, start out by stating that until there is a final plan for the Hiawatha Gardens site, the city will continue to maintain both the building and the site. Um, the Hiawatha Garden site will serve as a mobility hub to support all modes of transportation. Um, the third given refers to the October 2022 resolution that I just explained where council set out the charge for the task force. The next two givens focus on funding um, stating that the transformation of Hiawatha Gardens is contingent on available funding and no funding is assured at this point, and that future funding uh, sources may provide some future opportunities, it, they may also provide some future constraints. The next slide please Jennifer. The Gibbons also state clearly that responses rece received through the community engagement process will significantly impact the decisions that are made about the project. Uh, the Gibbons also address parking and explain that the plan won't result in a significant reduction from the parking inventory that exists. Other Gibbons are that the plan will conform to all state and federal regulations. The plan must honor Plan Manitou's values of environmental stewardship and green features. And finally, that the Manitou City Council will make the final decision on the Hiawatha Gardens transformation plan. Next slide, please, Jennifer. Um, in addition to the givens, there are a few building and site constraints we need to be sure that everybody understands because they'll need to be considered as decisions are made. The first is it's important to remember that the dance hall is, a, is a historic structure. So its rehabilitation has to comply with national, national and state historic standards. Um, in exploring solutions to the community's parking needs, the city has previously studied the financial implications of constructing a parking garage on the Hiawatha Garden site and has decided that it, such a structure is just not financially feasible. Um, the third constraint is that um, to help fund the Hiawatha Garden, excuse me, Hiawatha Gardens project, it's likely the city will need to seek all kinds of different funding sources. And one of those might be from the Pikes Peak Rural Transportation Authority. If funding is received from that authority, it must be used for transportation related improvements. And then the final one is that the proposed alignment of the Creekwalk Trail, which if you're familiar with that site is just just south of the Hiawatha Gardens um, building. Um, the final alignment will be, term, will be determined by the Creekwalk Steering Committee and the city. And that alignment will connect with Hiawatha Gardens as, as you'll see as Jennifer goes through the various site plans. Next slide, please, Jennifer. Um, the task force and BBH have identified goals for this plan for Hiawatha Gardens future. They include that a site will be, and the building will be accessible for people of all abilities. It'll be a, a safe, secure, and welcoming site and building. 
Um, we want to have a community facility that encourages and celebrates Manitou Springs creativity. And we want a design that reflects our community's natural beauty and that enhances the Creekside location of the Hiawatha Garden site. We want to create a site that encourages and supports all modes of transportation. Uh, we have to have a project that is economically, socially, and environmentally sustainable and that honors the history, which is significant on that Hiawatha Garden site. And finally, uh, we wanna provide a site and a building that will be used not just for today, but for generations to come. Um, community engagement has been going on on and off since 2018. In 2018, Hiawatha Gardens Task Force Two conducted a number of community outreach activities. Um, the first was a community open house. We invited everybody to come and tell us what they were concerned about regarding the High Mountain Garden site and what excited them about the possibilities on that site. We took all of that information and then developed a, a list of 14 potential uses for the site and took that to a community workshop open to everybody again and ask people to discuss and rate that list of possible uses. We put the same list on an online community survey that everybody in the community was welcome to access and respond to. And then finally, in the fall of 2021, Hiawatha Gardens Task Force 3 hosted a couple of community building tours because we wanted the community to see firsthand the condition of the dance hall building and to see what, what our architectural features were still present in that building. So what did, what did we hear from you? Next slide, please. We heard well, to over 250 responses with lots of great ideas and lots of insights. Um, the most consistent message we heard was the building would be great for some sort of community use. Lots of ideas about what community use that might be, an art center, a community market, a cafe, a garden, um, a music venue again, all kinds of ideas. We've also heard though that the building use, the building should be torn down and the whole site should be used as, as a parking lot. Um, so lots of, lots of different ideas. Others have told us that it's really important to recognize the building's history and that we should put the dance hall building back in the historic district. So um, we're really eager tonight. We thank you for being part of this tonight. And we're really eager to hear what ideas you have once you hear what BBH has to tell you about some possibilities. So thanks again for coming tonight. The task force appreciates it. Okay, Jennifer. Thank you, Susan. That's great. Um, so first we're gonna get into the site alternatives. So this is gonna be looking at the, the whole site. It's a lot of um, parking, how to enter the site, what would be um, available in the, in the micro mobility I'm sorry, the mobility hub, kind of thinking about what would happen on the site, whether you're there on a bike or you're walking or you're parking. So kind of taking the big picture and then we're gonna zoom down into the building and um, the floor plans. So um, Michaela, I think we'll present this section. Sounds good, thanks Jen. So we wanna start big picture and Susan, thank you for that overview of the goals as we know them today. Um, I think that that provides a great overview and um, this cross comparison of the alternatives wanted to share with you all first as we talk about what we call the common to all. So those items that are captured in each of these um, site layouts. So um, all of the alternative um, plans include the rehabilitation of the historic Hiawatha Gardens Dance Hall. And as Jen mentioned, she'll be covering that a little bit later in this presentation. Um, for the mobility hub itself, we're looking at all modes of transportation. Um, so bikers and pedestrians, and then providing amenities for them, such as bicycle racks, bike lockers, water bottle filling stations, um, and really clear signage so that people know where they need to go and how they're going to get there. 
Uh, in addition to that, we're looking at um, EV or electric vehicle charging stations. Um, we know that that's the wave of the future. And so incorporating those at the site, um, you'll see those in each of the alternatives in the Northwest corner. And as was also mentioned, uh, the future uh, Creek connection. And so um, really taking advantage of the location of the Hiawatha Gardens building and its location to the Creek and uh, that access um, from the Creek with that other concurrent project. Uh, we also want to be mindful of security and shelter. So looking again and taking advantage and thinking about where the bicycle racks and bicycles uh, storage lockers may go, making sure ultimately when these um, designs are finalized that they're well lit and safe and secure for people who are moving about the area. Um, and then thinking a little bit about shade and weather shelter and shelter um, and protection. And so um, those are opportunities that once these alternatives are vetted more, uh, we can um, incorporate either via a breezeway, some shelter opportunities, um, or whether that's an outside pavilion, um, that'll be further refined as we move through this design process. And um, really in all of these schemes, Accessibility um, is a really big component. So um, accessibility for pedestrians and bicyclists and um, people arriving by car and how they move through the site um, to access the bus shelter, um, the building itself and that future Creek Trail connection. So we're mindful of all of that in addition to drainage across the site. Um, we'll work with our civil engineer in future phases for ultimate grading, but making sure that we maintain positive drainage away from the building and the structure. Um, and you'll see on all of these alternatives, opportunities for landscape islands, which can help collect some of that surface drainage. And creating opportunities and spaces for the public art. We understand that Manitou has a great tradition of um, promoting public art and public art installation. And there are several opportunities on each of these alternatives to incorporate that. And then ultimately in terms of the landscape, um, being able to incorporate the natural aesthetic of Manitou Springs um, and being mindful of the landscape um, potential, whether that is seasonal plantings um, or what that looks like within the landscape islands themselves. So that's a big picture summary that is common to all of these alternatives. And now let's just go straight into alternative one. So for alternative one, this um, alternative looks at the main vehicle entry on the northeast side of the site. Um, yes, from the intersection of Pinion Lane. Um, so you'll see that this is uh, slightly shifted to the west of where the existing um, entry exit is. It provides for two-way vehicular circulation throughout the entire parking lot. Um, the accessible parking stalls are sited on the west side of the site. Uh, you can see the pointer there. And then um, for the access to the building, you'll see that the uh, restroom is sited on the northwest corner of the building with a future plaza space, um, which is designated um, adjacent to the Hiawatha Gardens and nestled in that area, which um, provides the great access from the Creek Trail, um, looking at where the bike racks are sited and the bike walkers and then access to um, the public transportation system and the existing bus shelter and stop. So this um, alternative really highlights and captures uh, a larger plaza area to the west um, and that connected space, which ultimately in that plaza um, area, we can start looking at seating and um, planters, um, again, those seasonal plantings, et cetera. This alternative does limit some of the pedestrian conflicts that you may see um, in terms of uh, where a pedestrian moves, is moving through the plaza, um, bicyclists dismounting and moving through that plaza space and access to that shelter. All of them, um, we would provide uh, crosswalks for pedestrian safety. A secondary entrance may be um, feasible for vehicles on the north 
um, west side of the site, that'll be determined in coordination with the city. Um, what they're currently experiencing with that entry is some congestion um, and backup because of the proximity to the intersection of off of Old Man's Trail and El Paso Boulevard, but that could potentially become a secondary entry exit location. Alternative two. So the 3D renderings here um, help to make that plan graphic a little bit more digestible. So the uh, graphic on the left-hand side of the screen here is an aerial view looking from the Northwest. So um, you start to see the relationship between the parking, the plaza area and the creek um, coming off of Old Man's Trail. And then the view off to the right here is looking more from the northeast um, back into the site. So the relationship with the parking, two-way traffic circulation and front-end parking stalls uh, throughout. Alternative two um, is similar in the sense that you have another large plaza gathering area on the west side of the site. Um, and the main difference here is that the um, restrooms are sited on the north side of the Hiawatha Gardens main building. Um, so it does provide a more open plaza space on the, the west side of the site. Again, providing for that access from the creek, um, pedestrians moving throughout the site as well, and then access to that public transportation uh, shelter. In terms of the vehicle entry, this one is sited in the northeast side of the site where the existing entry exit is. And again, a secondary entry may be um, incorporated on the northwest side of the site, um, pending future coordination with the city. And the accessible parking stalls are currently sited on the west side of the site to provide easy access from the vehicle um, into the plaza area garden and the uh, main building um, and if people are off to public transportation and adventuring elsewhere as well. The renderings for alternative two, um, the view again, these are all going to be the same camera angles here. So from the Northwest on the left-hand side, you see the larger um, plaza gathering space and the restroom on the North side of the building there. And then a very similar uh, layout for the parking um, on the east side of the site uh, with, again, the two-way circulation and front-end parking. Alternative three, this shifts uh, where the main vehicular entry is um, to a mid-block location off of Old Man's Trail which um, provides parking along the western edge of the Hiawatha Gardens main building. You see a crosswalk incorporated um, from the main entry and the accessible parking to the bus shelter. And um, as you proceed around the site, if you were um, traversing via vehicle, um, a secondary entry exit is on the northeast side of the site, again, where that existing location is. In terms of the um, access, we still provide a smaller area, um, but still have access um, for site furnishings, such as the bike lockers and bike racks um, with that connection for the trail. And around the site uh, building itself, a pretty generous walkway. Um, on the east side of the building, we're looking at about a 22 foot walk, um, which provides uh, a generous space for pedestrians who are maneuvering this area. We'll go to the renderings. So on the left side, you can see um, the additional entry exit off, off of Old Man's Trail with the parking on the west side of the building. Then as you proceed around, um, you'll see the that secondary entry exit off of El Paso Boulevard. Um, parking configuration is very similar on the east side of the site and um, those walkways and then the connection to the bus shelter. For alternative four, 
This um, alternative looks at a variation on where that um, restroom is sited. This is on the southwest um, side of the Hiawatha Gardens building, again providing access from the um, creek to uh, bike racks and bike lockers um, and a mid-block entry for vehicles along Old Man's Trail as you're accessing the site. Accessible parking stalls are sited on the um, west side of the Hiawatha Gardens building. And as you proceed around your vehicle, again, your entry exit um, on the northeast side of the site as well. This one, because of where the restrooms are sited in the southwest corner, provides an opportunity for a larger um, plaza space on the north side of the Hiawatha Main Gardens building. Um, and where Jen was just pointing at the bike walkers and bike racks. Again, um, this would incorporate some crosswalks so that we would provide safe access from the um, accessible parking stalls over to the uh, bus shelter in the renderings. Start to see that slight modification in where the um, mid-block entry is off of Old Man's Trail and the plaza to the north. Again, similar um, in the same layout of the Eastern parking layout. So just to circle back from where we started, again, this is just the alternative comparison so that you, before we hop into the architecture floor plans, um, you start to see the relationship alternative one and alternative two have the larger plaza space to the west and alternative three and four provides um, vehicular access off of Old Man's Trail um, as well. Thank you. Are there any like quick questions on those alternatives before we move forward? We're definitely gonna have time for in-depth questions. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> Architectural alternatives. So we've actually got eight different floor plans for you to look at. Um, there are slight differences between each um, and um, actually some major differences between a few of the schemes and then some of them are kind of like the restrooms will be in the south but they might be a little bit misaligned so you saw some of those on those site plan images um, but we'll just go into those a little bit further um, a couple things i wanted to look at before we look at the floor plans was were some precedents um, just going back to the architectural history um, this image right here was the open air dance pavilion so a lot of that um, those elements are actually still intact and in pretty good condition where we feel confident that we'll be able to rehabilitate those. Um, right below are some little site pavilions that were on the site um, kind of throughout its history. So when we see some open air pavilions, this is kind of the reference that we're using, to what we're thinking about those conceptually. Um, this next image is a section through the dance hall showing um, the large dance hall space with the um, queen rod trusses are what they're actually called. Um, but these wings were, um, were demolished. They weren't um, structurally sound or they were in poor condition. So those have been demolished. So the new concepts that we're coming in with are where you see this little red line is where we'd put our, the new exterior walls. Um, because right now there's just a little bit of roof hanging over this edge that is still intact. So the new plans and the new concepts go back to the 20s to the 50s is what we're calling the both the cultural and the architectural period of significance when it was used as a dance hall and when it would have looked like this image right here, which was a postcard from the 20s. And then this was a photograph from that time. Um, from the northeast corner. Um, so we've got a good history of photographs um, that kind of show the stages that the building has gone through. And these, these are some of the existing conditions. 
Um, the trusses are still all intact. They look good. They've been um, structurally analyzed that they're um, in good shape. They're not warped or buckling. Um, there are two sets of columns, uh, a round set that was original when it was an open air pavilion and a square set um, that was added when, I believe when the wings were added in the twenties. Uh, the wood floor is in good condition. So we'd rehabilitate that. The beadboard ceiling right here is in good condition as well. And then this is just a, a, an image to show you that um, before the walls were demoed, they were stucco. And we believe that this was the finish on the 1920s era walls. So we, in our proposal, we're, we're thinking that we'd go back with, with a, a modern stucco finish. So I'm gonna get into the floor plans. Um, these are the eight options. So generally I'm gonna start with a version that has a, the smaller restroom. So that means the building capacity for occupants would be smaller. And we'll look at it in the north and then moving around to the south with a few options. Um, another option here. And then looking at the restrooms on the north. Um, taking you inside just for a moment, we have a couple different configurations thinking about if the dance hall is used as a lecture space, a banquet, banquet use, or if it's a dance hall. And a number of the schemes that you'll see, um, this is actually, in this image, the exterior, the edge of the of the roof is right about where this column is right now. But in multiple schemes, we show an exterior wall just north of that by like 15 feet so that we could have an exterior patio on the creek side. Um, so this, we do need to talk a little bit more to Historic Colorado um, about if they would fund this, um, if they would fund this portion, they would fund or they could we could use monies from the state historical fund for rehabilitating anything that's existing, but um, we do need to investigate this a little bit further where they would allow us to put that, but it, it's just kind of a financial consideration that we're going to look into further on the next scheme. So, but this would be a view if we do have a patio on the south. So getting into these floor plans, um, we've got the plans over here on the side and then a rendering of the, what that could potentially look like. And um, if you can read through some of these plan implications, I'm gonna go, probably have to stay high level on all these plans. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to touch on all of these, but um, this is the Northwest Mobility Hub building is what we're calling this, um, the breezeway that connects the dance hall to the restroom location. So what we've, what we've tr decided to do was um, the roof is in, con is in good condition on the dance hall. So you'll see that's gonna be an asphalt shingled roof um, in all of these configurations. And then um, anything that we've added, we have a roof that looks similar in shape and form to the dance hall roof that's existing. Um, and then any breezeway that we've added, we've kept that a little, with a little bit more glazing, more windows so that you can see through it to either the restroom portion or to the existing dance hall. So in this floor plan option, um, with the restrooms on the north, that, that does kind of make for a protected plaza on the south. Um, so you'd have views to the creek. And this is showing a little pavilion, um, hearkening back to the pavilions that were on, on the site back in the 20s. And they think they were there from like the 20s to the 60s, actually. There were always little small pavilions on the site. So that's showing what that could be if we did a shade structure on the site. Um, you see the patio here. 
And this configuration is showing a banquet hall layout. And with this size of restrooms, we're able to hold 434 occupants in this entire building, but the dance hall it would fit 282. So we have a little bit of flexibility there. You could have all 434 in the dance hall, but uh, you'd be limited by the restroom sizes. So we're gonna ask you that later, like how many people do you think this building should serve? And um, you know, almost like how busy do you want this to be? Um, this option, we would have, this would have to pair up with one of the site options that had the large uh, site plan on the west, just the configuration here. Let me see about these implications if there are more that I should alert you to. Hey, Jennifer, um, um, mm -hmm. real quick, I uh, uh, just wanted to chime in here on the breezeway. Um, the breezeway on, on most of these is, um, is intended to serve double duty as uh, a lobby space and an entry, not just for the mobility hub restrooms, uh, but uh, also for the dance hall uh, or the uh, community space. Uh, and in all these examples that Jennifer is walking us through, uh, we're able to lock off the, uh, the community space from that mobility hub restroom area. Um, so they can uh, function uh, during different times of the day or um, uh, serve different hours during the day. Yeah, thank you. Um, also on each floor plan, what you'll see is this area on the north is um, for basically for a serving kitchen. We call it a warming or a catering kitchen because it wouldn't have your standard um, kitchen appliances. It would basically be for caterers to come in bring their food, but be able to serve it into the larger dance hall. Uh, and then a storage room. And um, this is another exit, which um, is connected to the restrooms when they, um, when they appear on the north side. I'm gonna go to the next plan. Uh, this version looks at if the restrooms were attached orthogonally. Um, what this option allows for is for folks to walk across the patio because that could be, that would be open, um, you know, 24 seven, it wouldn't ever be locked. You could, you could pass through there. So that makes it nice for folks to get from one side to the other when they're on the site. Uh, another breezeway to connect to the restrooms. Um, and again, like Ed said, um, these doors could always be locked. So, when there's not an event in the in the dance hall so that the restrooms could be used for folks using the mobility hub. Um, it's the same capacity as the previous scheme about four, 434 is the number of folks. Um, this is a nice option because it, it can work on some of the smaller plaza options if we don't, if we elect to not have the full plaza, this, this option is still viable and allows that space to the south of, of the restroom location for circulation on the site. Um, this option is the only plan that we have right now where we pull this south exterior wall right under the edge of the roof. Um, like I was mentioning, if, if for some reason we find that that it's not acceptable to do a patio there, or if we want to keep that south end intact with um, the flooring and to keep that edge of the roof at an enclosed space, um, then we could put a series of doors along the south so that we could still enjoy the view and the connection to the creek, but it, it wouldn't be an outdoor area. And in this version, uh, we've pulled this, um, the restrooms and the breezeway to the south to uh, let there be more plaza to the north. This version is just a little bit different with a, a little bit more interesting configuration on the breezeway. Um, what this scheme allows is uh, these restrooms are aligned with the creek alignment. Um, so utilizing that plaza space 
so that it's not um, that space is well used and um, allows for more plaza space to the north. And this version does have the patio on the south, so there would be a, a solid wall here with a door um, so that folks could come across the patio and then into the breezeway and connect to the north. In this option, um, we've been asked to look at a couple options that house a parking, the parking offices. So that might be an office for um, three or four people. So uh, that's in this area. What that allows for is um, a little bit more constant supervision on the site, um, thinking that people would be in there during the, during the business day um, that could uh, potentially lock and unlock the building and just keep an eye on things is, is one of the benefits of having this office here. Um, so I'm, I might let Dole or other task force members speak to, you know, the officing needs of the city. I think that that addresses a, a concern there, but, um, but somebody else might have to speak to that, <laughs> what the demands are on officing in Manitou right now. Um, so with that, the dance hall stays very similar, identical to the previous plans, but we just add that parking office on this option. And this rendering is, um, it's, it would be a little bit wider here on this building. So this is actually a repeat rendering, but um, it would be very similar to that option. Hey, Jennifer, one, one of the things that was discussed you know, with, the, with a couple of these options that do consider um, uh, a small office space, uh, city office space, is that it would give the building um, uh, an occupant and some presence during the day, even when events weren't occurring. So there's some built-in security, uh, some built-in like uh, presence. Yep. Thank you. That option. Yep. We know that's what you said. <laughs> Thank you, Tweed. <laughs> okay, in the next few options, um, the restrooms move to the north. Um, we've kept this as a, as a floor plan all along. Um, if you can remember the, the slides a couple back where uh, the addition, um, there was typically a massing in this area and I think it was in the 50s um, there is a site plan that shows the dance hall with a building on the north for refreshments. So we're, we're drawing from that image and um, or that traditional uh, massing on the buildings or on the site and referencing that. Um, again, we're considering this pass through as the breezeway. So uh, the, the set of doors would be um, primarily glass, making it a little more um, transparent than the rest of the, the dance hall building. And then, um, you know, I neglected to say that we're thinking about the restrooms being in stone. And I, I neglected to put an image about um, the Manitou Greenstone. There is stone available on site that was um, an older foundation wall that still exists. So uh, we're thinking that that's a great material that we could utilize for the restrooms just to set it apart from the main dance hall. Um, so back to this plan, this is our largest occupancy that we're showing. So you can see the restrooms are quite large. What this would allow for is um, basically the largest capacity of um, folks in the dance hall. So if you wanted to have you know, a concert, musicians, this is allowing for not only a lecture format like this, but if the whole place were packed with folks standing or dancing, um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't need any tables and you can, um, all those folks can use the restroom. <laughs> so that, that's what you're seeing on this plan. So that building occupancy is 920 with 845 in the dance hall. So these are the, the number of restrooms it would take to have 
900 people in the in the building. Um, this works best um, when there is the on the large site with the plaza, then these these wings aren't um, aren't terrible. Um, in the site plan where we just have uh, the sidewalks going around on these sides, this is it's pretty narrow here when you walk around. So I think this seems to fit better on the larger site, especially if there is a large plaza here. Um, we'll see the same things, the patio, kitchen, storage, and just the breezeway on the north. And then, um, then the, the restrooms are gonna get gradually smaller on the north on the next uh, couple options. Uh, this option, this moves the parking office into uh, what is currently the dance hall and the kitchen changes the configuration. So the dance hall would effectively be smaller by, um, by one bay, which is um, between the trusses uh, is 15 feet. So we, we take up another 15 feet with, with these amenities, the parking office and uh, the kitchen but still allow for that connection. Folks can stay inside, restrooms to the north. Um, I feel like this, uh, this fits a little bit better proportionally on either of those site plans, whether or not we have the full plaza. And this capacity is um, 760 in a little bit smaller space. And the last plan is if we were to um, keep this massing um, similar in width to the dance hall, uh, which, which makes kind of a nice proportion here, um, this configuration houses uh, 560, but the parking office came out and we're just back to having the kitchen, the storage, again, a patio and um, the smaller um, configuration for restrooms to the north. I think that's it. That's it for the plans. So what we're going to do is do breakout rooms and let's see, we have 22 people now. What we're going to ask you to do, um, each group is going to discuss the same questions. Um, a task force member will take notes in our breakout groups. So what we'll do is we'll go, you will have time to discuss the plans that Michaela and I just went through. And, um, and then we'll have someone report back to the large group, whether that's the task force members taking notes or that's someone in your group. I'll leave that up to your group to decide. And um, I'm going to remind all the co-hosts to make sure your uh, breakout rooms are recording. Let's see, um, 22. I think we can just do two breakout rooms. Is everybody okay with that? Here are the discussion questions I'd like that you'll go through. So if you wanna look over those, I will do the, um, cover the tech side of breaking you up. <laughs> if anyone needs a quick break or anything, that might be a good time to do it. Yeah, that's a good call. I'm gonna sign you automatically. Great. Um, I'm, I'm not terribly familiar with breakout rooms, but um, they do work pretty easily. So I think you'll see a pop-up on your screen to say, um, leave and go to the breakout room. And when you want to come back, you just say, join the, the larger meeting. Um, I might shuffle folks around a little bit to make sure that um, Ed and Michaela are in one, one room. Josh is in room one. So I'm going to join that one. So um, feel free to join these breakout groups and, and we'll see you in a little bit. 
Jen, can you remind me when we're rejoining? Yes, let's see. Hey, we're early. Um, 740. Or message me if you want to come back sooner. Okay, sounds great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you should be able to join. Um, the same aspects. Uh, it looks like Jennifer's got the recording down. Great. <laughs> That's the most important part, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer, do you want to pull up or do you want me to share my screen with the questions? Um, I can share my screen. And it also looks like we have a couple people from the task force. So would somebody mm -hmm. be so kind to record the notes for us? I'll take notes. This is Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Great. Thanks, Thanks Nancy. Nancy. So I'm sure that was a lot of information for everybody who um, is just hearing this for the first time. Um, so our discussion questions, that looks like you can see my screen now. Okay. Yes. So we can talk um, about the site alternatives. So those were like the, the big site with the parking. And then we'll talk about architectural plans and then um, the occupancy issues. Um, we didn't actually get much into like what community use would, would you think of for the for the dance hall, but we could speak a little bit about that. And then um, ideas for adding Manitou Springs character. So and Jen, mm -hmm. it does look like, I think we have Julia in our group and she had actually posted in the chat um, if she could, if we could review the parking layouts real quick because she was not on for that part. Yeah. Yep, let me catch up. Do you want to do that real quick, Josh? Sure, and it might be just best to go, um, maybe just that, to that comparison when I can kind of talk you through them, Julia, and we can uh, open up the conversation. Um, so we looked at four site alternatives, and as you kind of look from left of your screen to the right, uh, we had two that had sort of this singular uh, vehicle entrance up in the north uh, east corner, which is going to be the top right of each diagram. Um, with a larger plaza space kind of built in for pedestrians on the bottom left side. Um, and so we had a couple different ideas of how that movement could work for both vehicles and pedestrians. And um, of course, thinking of uh, accessible parking spaces, accessibility in general, and just um, pedestrian connections. And if you look at um, alternatives three and four, this was looking at you know, is there a way we can look at a, a main entrance uh, for vehicles along Old Man's Trail? But we shifted those entrances from the existing ones to see if we could put it more in the middle of the actual city block uh, in efforts to reduce some of that congestion. Um, and so with three and four, you're looking at kind of the main entrance on the bottom left side, and then there is a secondary entrance on the top right as well. Okay. Okay, um, I'm just sorry, Michaela. Okay, uh, so Jen, it looks like we might be having some um, technical issues. It sounds like the other breakout group just left and that they needed to review some information. I don't know if we all wanna rehuddle really quickly. I'm sorry that we just kind of threw some more information and we might have to take another pause and come back. Okay, um, Ed was also just calling me on my cell phone. And Susan's asking for help. Okay, so all the red flags are going up. So I'll leave. I'll see if I can help while you guys discuss site alternates. Cool. How does that well, sound? Yeah, we'll stay here. That sounds perfect. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, so Julia, I hope that gave you kind of a brief overview on those park. Hi, Susan. Hey, Jennifer, I'm trying to rejoin the group, but I don't see a join button on my screen. Oh, I heard there were issues. Uh, let's see. Um, Sorry to interrupt your other group. Oh, no. Um, Ed's also like calling me, messaging me. So <laughs> okay. oh, what we found out is that we only had one person who wasn't either on city staff or on the task force in that second group. So we were going oh, to join your group. That's I see. Trying to do. Okay. Can you pull us all back together? Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. Do you think we should just discuss as a big group? Yes, I think okay. so. Yeah. Okay, sorry. We had more staff and task force members than we, we just had one, uh, one person that wasn't either on staff or on the task force. Okay. I think Josh was trying to tell me that, but I didn't understand. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do a message or we'll close all rooms. Should I just hang tight? I think so. Okay. Hope I don't break it. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean, Becca. The PDFs are not quite, they're wrapped up in the um, video. Yeah, it's it's a little difficult to pick those yeah. out. So uh, I can, um, I have the draft plan. So in whatever breakout room I'm in, I can pull it up bigger while we talk about it. Sure, or of course, Jennifer can or Mm -hmm. Michaela or anyone can. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. How was it? <laughs> we were really concerned about how to do breakout rooms. So thank you all for uh, doing that test with us. But we'd like to just discuss as a big group. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about we just pull up? Um, is there any any initial questions to start on? Or we can just kind of pull up the first layout and just kind of seek any kind of comments or feedback on that and just kind of work through them if you guys want. Let me reshare my screen. So I'm sitting on Alt-1. Do we think everybody made it back? <laughs> Did y'all get lost in? We matrix. only have 15, <laughs> Jennifer. 15? That's okay. Denise and Roy signed off. Okay. So we're okay. We're okay. Okay. We've got 18, it says. Okay. So the first question in considering, you know, the site alternatives, which do you believe best fits the needs of Manitou Springs and why? And that's kind of contrary to my suggestion of let's pull up the first, the first site plan and discuss it, but um, we're, well, we're willing to go in either direction that you community members would like us to go. Like Molly, to... I see your hand up. Yeah, I'm one of those people for whom this project has really been a long, long time. Um, so I'm wanna just I start with thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> I think that for the purposes of um, our town, um, the greatest number of parking spaces is a great idea. I think that um, I liked the fourth actually the best because I think having the bathrooms at the north end of the building uh, makes sense for, you had it, it was there, no, it's not there. Um, I think it makes sense for people coming on and off the buses and things like that. And I think that's, and coming in and out of the parking lot to do the buses. I think that's where the bathrooms ought to go. I think the mid block um, on Old Man's Trail, I know for a fact that having, the, you know, there's, it's horrid congestion and I don't go there because of it right now. So I think the mid block thing is a good idea and having two entrances and exits is a great thing. But I think maximizing the parking is going to make this go down, you know, sweeten the pill going down. And I think that if we need a larger plaza area um, for an event or something like that, 
um, we can, you know, I imagine we could block off a couple parking spaces on one side or the other and create a larger spot for an event. But otherwise, these really nice big part um, walkways, um, I think, are are really terrific. And um, I think, as far as using this space, I think four is the most efficient, and I think it's um, more elegant. And I would like to say that. Um, I was on the historic preservation forever. And I don't know that the building, anybody wanted to restore the, well, maybe somebody did want to restore the building to its original, but what it needs to do is fit in Manitou. And there are, Manitou has its own historic preservation guidelines. And if it gets put back into the historic preservation, it gets packed in the historic district. I think those are the guidelines we have to follow. And it, there it's, nowhere near as um, it's got a lot more elbow room in it than you might think if you'd never if you've never looked at them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Molly. We, we have heard that about the historic guidelines. Um, so yeah, we definitely need to look at that and, and dig into that a little bit more. And Jennifer and Molly and I just wanted to clarify because right now we're looking at alternative three and you mentioned alternative Four. Yeah, I was a little confused. So you liked the restrooms on the north. So are you talking about architecture? I lied. I like number three. Door okay. number three, please. Okay. And I also <laughs> think door number three had the highest number of parking places. Hey, Jennifer, before anyone else starts, will you record? I think when we came back, it mm. stopped the recording. Um, I, I think I am recording. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. Yeah. Thank you for checking. Jan, you have your hand up. Um, I will not speak to the historic part or anything like that. However, I will speak to safety and I think any kind of parking on the West side and any kind of access from old man's trail, um, really can adds to congestion and safety of pedestrians, cyclists, walkers, rollers of any kind. So I don't think there should be any parking in that, on that Western slope, Western area. And I kind of like the idea of having, uh, on a secondary note, uh, I like the idea of having uh, a parking system headquarters there for someone on site but not in uh, the Hiawatha building itself. I think preserve that for events, um, activities, community meetings, those kinds of things. And I think the bigger that we can have Hiawatha building as far as accommodating people and events, the better it is for our Manitou gatherings, as well as if we choose to have some music events, et cetera, et cetera. Um, my big concern is um, on the north side, if we continue to have snow, which might be a question, um, it, there's going to be some drifting and some ice. So um, I just have a concern about the weather and the, and the winter conditions there. That's what I'm thinking about right now. That's great. Thank you. Oh, Carl, but not Carl. You have your hand up. It is up. me, the wife, Joan Stang. Hi, Joan. Hello, everyone. Thanks for letting us have this public comment portion for this uh, important meeting about Hiawatha Gardens redevelopment. I wanted to let you all know what my favorite is. Mine happens to be alternate alternative number two. And if you want to drill down to the different versions you showed us, mm -hmm. three potentially 3B or even 2B and 3A. I think maybe the first um, option for alternate, alternative uh, two is a little on the large side, meaning, wow, almost a thousand people in the building. I mean, that's awesome. That's generous. Lots of bathrooms. Mm -hmm. But it, my, my question is, wow, what, I mean, what are we going to be doing? that requires that we've got a thousand people in there. 
Heck, a concert sounds wonderful. So let, let me go back to why I'm liking that alternative number two. Um, I agree with Jan regarding the west entrance for vehicles along Old Man's Trail. Way too many points of conflict for people who are walking, riding bikes. What if I'm in a wheelchair? I've got a walking cane. I'm walking my dogs. I'm jogging, what have you. I really would love to see this redevelopment give rewards and more space to people who are choosing to use multi-mobility modes to get there other than a single occupied vehicle. I truly believe that having a larger plaza would be wonderful, wonderful ways to insert sitting areas, potentially canopies. I love the uh, outdoor sitting space where you showed, I think you're calling it the breezeway, mm -hmm. where people could sit looking at the creek, seeing that beautiful asset, definitely keeping the restrooms on the, on the uh, north side as opposed to the creek side. Let us, let us be able to enjoy that beauty, that natural beauty from that creek side. Um, what else did I wanna say about this? Greenstone, that's brilliant. Using the greenstone, that is a historical stone from Manitou to, to do that outdoor um, portion of the uh, bathroom on the north side would be wonderful. Giving one access to cars, one access point, one, one uh, exit point, I, I think would minimize so much conflict that happens from this old man's trail side, just with people who are walking, they're done with their you know, run. We've got other events going on at the uh, park just west of the uh, Hiawatha Gardens uh, parking and building area. It, I, I just would, would prefer to see more space given to pedestrians, please. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Those are great and thank you. Julia, I see your hand up. Yes, um, as one of the business owners and a person that lives here, um, I really want to see the maximum parking. I have watched us, um, I, I, my curiosity is, that, is the bus stations going to still be the same places? I did not hear that addressed. As, as of now, that's our plan. So they will still be blocking off the park um, entrance on the on Old Man Trail. I mean, they, the parking spaces. They will still be where they are taking up parking spaces. Um, as a business owner and someone that lives on Ruxton and knows about incliners, the more spaces for the incliners to park there and to allow people that come to shop here makes more sense to me than blocking off the west side from parking. Um, I have watched how people do and don't um, come to events in Manitou that are Manitou residents. We do get a lot of visitors come here um, for events, not just, and no matter how we promote it to Manitou residents, for people to come here it's not as well attended as by outsiders, if you want to call them that. So having a bigger space that's more walkable, we have a whole park across the street for walkability. I just do not see the point of taking away parking for the, the west side of it. Yeah, just thank you, Julia. A, mm -hmm. Just wanted to add a comment about the parking that keeps coming up. Just want to remind folks, guess what? Manitou will never have enough on-street parking nor parking spots for all the people who want to visit us. It's just going to keep being a problem. Congestion's going to get worse. More people will need more places to park. It's just going to keep snowballing. It'll never be addressed. So we got to get people here in other ways other than a car. That's, that's what I have to say about parking. Well, I, 
I agree we can need to give people here other ways, but I don't see by making this fewer parking. How many spaces are actually there now? Um, <clears throat> we're looking at like 143-ish, something like that. So that's, I, I mean, today, that's about how many there are. Now, that doesn't include the dirt area. That's kind of a transition phase, but um, there was 143, 146, something like that. So there's actually more than available, right? If you pave the dirt area or use the dirt area, which we did during events, there's how many spaces possibility that we're gonna lose then? We're gonna lose like 30 spaces? From the maximum, the maximum optimum of existing, but you know, it's kind of comparing apples to oranges because that would just be a building with a parking lot and no, um, no sidewalk around it, no bathrooms, no mobility features. That would just be literally just the Hiawatha building and then parking all the way around it. Well, I've, I've been one that's sort of opposed some of this and so have a lot of business people that value the parking more than they do um, this building, but um, I know that the historical side of it is important to a lot of people. It's just, I'm waiting to be proved to me that it's going to be valued to the business community in ways that really make sense. Okay, great comment. Thank you. And yeah, any other, yeah, I see other hands are up. Jan, I think I saw your hand next. Um, just to follow up with probably Joan, as well as Julia. Um, we are always gonna have a parking problem until we get a parking garage, maybe where LaFon is or something like that. Um, and as it is right now, um, a lot of the reasons why people who live in the core of, this, of Manatee don't come down is because there are too many cars driving around looking for a parking spot in my opinion, as a, as a resident. So I would say the more that we can keep people out and make as is that second alternative, make the area welcoming for people to come and be there in a multimodal way and not feel like they're being threatened by cars, which I think a lot of people do. Um, I know it's not answering the situation for for merchants um, who really are desperate about getting cars in, but we need to figure out a different way to get cars in rather than sacrificing a site that could really enhance the city itself to make it much more welcoming. Thank you, Jan. Molly, I think your uh, hand was next. To, to be clear, I need a moment of clarification. You say that there are 140 some parking places there now? Uh, before the building was torn down, that's how many spots I think were at Hiawatha. And how many are there like right this minute? So at any rate, we are not reducing the number of parking spaces from what it was before. I think, I think there's a loss of a handful of parking spots from how it stands today to the proposed alternatives. But certainly not 40. No, no. no. Okay, so it's, it's nice. more like four. It's a, it's a handful, and I don't mean to be vague, but it's kind of hard how we counted some of the spots, but it's a handful of spots. We're going from, you know, uh, something in the low 140s to the low or mid 130s. Well, mm -hmm. what I'm, I'm in, as, a, as much as I'm in love with alternative three, it says that there are 144 parking places. So I, the idea that we're losing 30 parking places that I thought I heard earlier was, was just a little inaccurate. Yeah, and, and Molly, to clarify that comment, and I don't, I, don't, I don't think I said loss of 30 spots. If I, if I did, that could cause confusion. The point was, is that if we were to leave the building as it sits today with no periphery, 
walkability, no bathrooms, no anything. And we paved the open dirt area. You know, that's the highest and most use of parking spots. And I think that number gets up into, you know, plus 20 more spots type thing. Sorry if that was confusing. Yeah, just for a comparison, um, you know, I know these, these numbers could definitely change by, you know, one or five, but um, in comparison, the full plaza options, these are at 134, 132, and then alternative three is 139, alternative four is at 138. So for the amenity of the plaza, it's an exchange of about, you know, five to six parking spots. And that's the standard parking stalls. That does not include the accessible. Okay, gotcha. So it's 138 plus four plus one, like on alternate right, four? The, the total, uh, the first line. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> I was reading standard. Uh, okay. Just so to keep, it's yeah, thanks, 139, Jennifer. 137. <laughs> yeah, we need more numbers, huh? 144, 143 for the totals. So, still, and Anne, I'm not sure if your hand was up next, but if you if you'd like to ask your question, um, just more of a comment. I wanted to put in a vote for alternative one. Um, I really agree that I don't. I just don't buy that the addition of five more parking spaces is going to solve Manitou's parking problems by any extent at all. Um, and I think this is a nice balance between having that parking available for people who are coming, such as incliners, and really serving the residents. I think that that plaza is going to be um, a resource that will be for the residents who are taking their kids to the park, um, who want to swing through and refill a water bottle, what have you. Um, so I feel like if we don't have a plaza, we're basically just doing this for the tourists. And, you know, I'm a fan of the tourists. They keep our economy alive, but um, I would like for this to also serve us residents. Thank you. Mary Ellen, you're next on my list. And you're muted. I've only been to a couple of these meetings, so I wanted to listen a little bit first. And um, I agree with a lot of the comments. Um, I'm involved with the landscaping, and so I'm here a lot. I, I've been uh, I've been on city staff for eight years, and I think I've just got some things to add. I just came from a climate action work group meeting about an hour ago, so my focus is on the creek and the health of the creek. I went to one of the Hiawatha Task Force meetings, and there was a, a parking lot design where the, um, the tree islands and the parking islands were running east-west to capture more of the uh, asphalt runoff before it comes into the creek. And I'm just wondering what happened to that design and why it wasn't um, included. Um, I did also agree with uh, uh, some of the concerns about the traffic over there on Old Man's Trail. And one option I see would be to have a one-way entrance um, where it is now because that would get the people from the main avenue to go right into the parking area one way, however, so that would, that would limit the congestion for handicapped and for a slow traffic and, um, <clears throat> and keep the congestion away from where the, the transit buses are. Because if you don't have that entrance, then people are going clear around that area where it's totally congested. Plus there's a four-way stop, you'll have to take a right so to me, you really need to leave that entrance, but you can limit it to like a one way. So think about that option. Um, a lot of hardscape with the plaza ideas. As a maintenance person, plazas are a huge maintenance nightmare for gum and you'd have power washing going all the time. So that's more runoff into the creek. Uh, the covered breezeway, I think should be closed off unless you're in the building, unless you can have in the building, because you're going to have people hanging out there. You're going to have trash going into the creek and into the 
<clears throat> the natural area there. So these are just some practical things that I've seen over the years <laughs> that, that come up all uh, over and over. I did agree with the north entrance on, I like number three, just to cut to the chase. Cut to the number three was my ferret. I think the parking um, office needs to be in the building. We need to have a presence at that site um, uh, during business hours. Um, I see people there all the time and ha what happens with the public, we have to clean up after them all the time. So the bathrooms on the north side where people can go in and get out and, and get to the transit is great. To me, this is a transit hub and we need to slow traffic down. We need to have people to be able to park and go see our sites, but not destroy what we have. So the Creek's health is my priority. And that alternate uh, parking lot design, I think should be looked at because I think it might have even had more parking places. Um, I didn't have a, I did a rough draft, but I didn't have any uh, dimensions on it. So I wasn't sure about that. What else? Thank you, Mary Ellen. And I did pass along your proposed layout to a DHM. Thank and you. when we looked at the need for it to actually circulate traffic and not trap cars in the bays, it, um, it really cut down the amount of available spots. But we're happy to follow up with you about that. Sure, thank you, I appreciate it. I think that's all the points I had. Um, I, I did agree with a lot of the concerns. I just think there's some gray areas where you can have these uh, concerns met with a little bit of uh, uh, changes like the one way, thinking more about one way traffic. And uh, so that's it for me, thank you. Mary Ellen, please put that stuff in the um, comments. Thank you. Right, Becca, thanks. I know you had your hand up a little bit. Yeah, thank you. So I really appreciate that all of these show a real attempt to balance the many needs that have been identified because that's um, it's a bit of a juggling act. That's why it so, took us so long. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, applause. If I had to choose a favorite, I think I'm looking at one and two. And a big part of that is because of how much time I've spent looking at traffic on Old Man's Trail. And I do have to acknowledge that the level of congestion and just pedestrian endangerment by the trail, by that side of the avenue is profound. And in the summer, especially so. So to the extent that we can protect people who might be rolling through those spaces in wheelchairs or strollers, I think that that is the right choice, especially knowing that the trade-off is like four parking spaces. So I think that's what I would offer. And I just had a quick question and I know this is a little bit um, sensitive in some places, but I think what struck me is knowing that yes, this is a transit hub. Of course, we wanna give access to the bathrooms. And one thing that is working really well right now about our little porta potty system is that they're unisex. Was there any aspect of having unisex toilets available for people? Yeah, thank you for that comment. Um, on, the, on the restrooms to the north, especially when they're larger, we do have a couple unisex that are on the end and those are actually like have doors to the outside. So thinking that if the dance hall is locked up down, we could have at least two restrooms open 24 seven that are on the outside that could be, you know, all gender restrooms. Jan. No, this is probably something that's sacrilegious. But is there a way that we could have Old Man's Trail have access only for the buses? and route the people that are coming into uh, Hiawatha Gardens to park. I don't know. A Dan, way. Dan, um, it's, a, it's a terrific and it's an interesting idea. And in an isolated situation, it, it works. It's a neat idea. What we're looking at is what are the consequences of removing that access from Manitou Avenue? Uh, because you take that traffic and you put it somewhere else. And so when it goes somewhere else, what is what are the what are the domino effects of that? So I can tell you we are looking at that, Jan. I, we have discussed that idea and we didn't present that here tonight because um, we have not vetted it yet and we and we're trying to and we didn't want to present something that you know looks like a good idea but then causes more harm or 
or more challenge later down the road. Um, but we but we are looking at that and trying to evaluate and see, you know, we just need to fully understand um, the, the, the results of that change. Thanks for that feedback, appreciate it. I just wanted to add a comment about the merchant and the business owner concern about not enough parking for them. Um, statistics and data, there's plenty of statistics and data about this that's out there, but literally people who show up on bikes and walk and use multi-mobility, they end up lingering longer, therefore spending more money and hanging out in our space. It's a well-known fact that a lot of the people who are using Hiawatha to park, to go run and use the incline, they, they just tuck tail and they're out of there. They don't linger and go to our restaurants. They don't go shopping. They, they get the hell out of there and they go back to the Springs or wherever they came from, a lot of them. They're not hanging out in our town, helping to increase our tourism dollars. Just wanted to make that. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you. Okay, who else has a question? This has been good. I see Julia's hand up. Um, I have a discrepancy about people on bikes actually shopping. Perhaps they don't have any way to carry things out with them. Um, people that go to the incline do often stop and eat. All of those concepts are more for the restaurants than the merchants. If they're on bikes, they would be more hungry than shopping. Um, I don't know where you have statistics that would prove that biker people on regular bikes would do more shopping, but come here for the exercise. Um, but uh, I have, I mean, I really would be fearful if we tried to close off um, Lover's Lane or not Lover's Lane, Old Man's Trail for what would that do for events, for, and again, just watching people having only one choice of how to get to get out is on El Paso. And that's sort of a blind curve right there. And I live on a blind curve. Um, Julia, we, we agree with you. And again, it's something we're looking at, you know, the consequences and the results. I mean, it puts more traffic on El Paso right next to Memorial Park, which is a narrow area. So, you know, we're looking at it, um, but we're, we're not confident or we haven't discussed it enough to even really want to present any kind of a layout. And, and, and um, appreciate the comments. If we can try to stay focused on just the comments on the sites and any nuances to those, that'd be great. Well, I agree that it's hard to maintain I, that with Mary Ellen, it's hard to maintain that much um, concrete for where people would be standing and sitting and walking. I really appreciate her concepts about how much trash would also be accumulated there. Okay, thank you. Who's next? Becca? Yeah, you know, I am kind of curious about the plaza. Does that assume more pavement or are there, you know, semi-permeable to permeable surfaces that could be part of that surfacing? Becca, I think that's a great point and a great question. Um, the material of that plaza hasn't been determined yet. Um, so I do think that uh, in a future phase that that could be incorporated um, in conjunction with working with our civil engineer as well. So I think there are opportunities to potentially even uh, make some of those planter spaces larger um, to decrease some of the amount of paving, et cetera. Um, but that, that plaza space itself um, is more of a placeholder to get your feedback in terms of the overall organization of the site and will continue to be developed. Okay, thank you. So for what it's worth, I love the idea of having those flexible public spaces because as you know, in Manitou, yes, we have some beautiful parks, but what we don't have are shared spaces that can be flexible in how we use them and how we set them up. So I think the idea of having planter spaces and um, a public space that could have, you know, art and entertainment and just a place to be that isn't, you know, trampling grass. <laughs> could be really interesting and possibly really valuable. You know, something we haven't really talked about 
um, is that some of these, you know, th there is a chance that, it, you know, coming out of this whole process, if there really is a preferred solution or a per preferred layout by the community that, that can be recommended to council and council can improve, you know, some of this stuff could be built in phases, you know, I mean, it, it could, be, it could happen one day where, I, and I'm just, I'm just making this up to let you all think about it, but maybe the plaza gets built and then the building is a year behind as it gets renovated, you know, so this, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, all done at once because they're, they're challenging efforts. They require different colors of money. So, you know, there is a hope that we could do some work and some improvement. You know, I, I think we all know we need the bathrooms ASAP. Um, and so, you know, that, that could be an early action project where once it's determined that the, the bathrooms go ahead and get built type thing. Susan? Hey, do, do we have some time, I'm looking at the clock here, to talk a little bit about occupancy of the building and get people's ideas about- That's a good idea. About yeah, that? I was, I was gonna say we've spent 40 minutes on the site. So now we need to uh, look at the building, the occupancy and Manitou character. And maybe can we do that in 15 minutes? Jan, did and you of course, have everyone can provide comments into the Google form too, and we'll we'll compile those and follow up on those. So, yeah. Jan, did you have a comment on the site? Um, I think I mentioned this earlier, but I think that's where maybe it would be lovely to have our community gatherings, our uh, Manny Awards, um, even some music things. But I think the the city hall in, in its renovation, we might be losing some of, of that. Um, I'm just projecting, I don't know anything, but I think if we have an alternative to that, it would be lovely for we as Manitoids to be able to, to have gatherings there. And then also have, have possibility of music and or dancing. Nice, thank you. I'm going to take you guys to the floor plans now and just show you the eight options again. Um, let's see. Is this a good screen to be on? Can you see them well enough or do you want me to zoom into each one? Okay, Jan says good. Um, right here you can see the numbers and what those do refer to is um, where they show up on the site plan, like 1A is in the color plan, 1B is the alternate to the side. So that's the numbering convention, but um, for this presentation, organized them so that they um, were kind of grouped together by where those restrooms were. Does anybody want to start us out on their favorite or least favorite? Or the number of folks as uh, Susan was asking. Jan, go ahead. Well, it's kind of crazy, but I like the 2A because of the large capacity potential, but with um, a parking office off, which is 4C. Okay. So it's a combination. But did you have an opinion whether the parking office should be within the dance hall or, or outside? You might have mentioned that earlier. I think outside, but not wedded to that. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask you? Quick question, I'm so sorry. Sure. Um, so this is a, a transit hub and you mentioned bottle fills. Are there any other places for people to find refreshments or it, we're, we're talking about the use of this space as being specific to special events? Right now, yes. Um, I guess the, the option of having the, the serving kitchen in there could allow for you know, constant refreshments out of that location. 
um, I guess in my mind, I'm thinking those really large sidewalks might lend itself to pulling up food trucks. Um, there's, there are, you know, drinking fountains here and we have sh shown some there, you can install some of those on the site that, um, that won't freeze, but I, I feel like that might just be a maintenance nightmare. <laughs> Y'all might veto that straight away. So does that answer your question? Yeah, Bye. thank you. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to just use the hand feature in Zoom, that seems to be the easiest. If you click in the lower right hand corner on the reactions button, there's a little raise hand button. Thank Jan did, oh, I'm sorry, Joan, you had your hand up for a while. Thanks. I had mentioned earlier, my favorite interior space layout would be either 3B or maybe even 2B and 3A. And if we find it is important to have that city parking office, those two, I believe if I'm right in the rendition, for the drawing actually it would accommodate an office as an option. So 3B with the parking office, 2B, yep, or even the mm -hmm. 2B or the 3A version. If we mm -hmm. wanted to go a little smaller with the size, I know it would reduce the bathrooms as well as the, the uh, dance hall space. But you like the restrooms on the north? Yes, ma'am. But not, not the extra large. <laughs> well, I know Jan had mentioned 2A, that's a, I, I guess we just have to, you know, figure out, wow, do we need that much space? And if we wanted to reduce it, but yet have the city office space for the parking, mm -hmm. I think 3B was included, was including that space mm -hmm. as well as the 2B slash 3A. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? How many of you have been, in, been inside Hiawatha since? Just curious. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Jennifer, did you see Molly's comment? She'd ask about the relationship between occupancy and okay sorry i didn't know if you saw it. i didn't see that so no thank you for bringing that to my attention um so jan you asked about water bottle refill stations sorry i'm going to hit that first <laughs> okay. um drinking fountains that we're showing um they're tiny you can you, you might be able to see the little blip here in the breezeway um usually they're attached right on the restrooms usually what we do now is um, you've got the taller uh, drinking fountain and that has the bottle filler in the back of it and then one to the side is lower and that that doesn't typically have a bottle filler but we can always you know add more if we if we need to okay and then ratio of parking spaces to building capacity so what's pretty interesting is if we're following the manitou parking code as it's published right now, which I know there might be considerations about, you know, is there going to be a new parking code or what are we going to be required to follow? Um, that might throw another wrench in the work, but um, parking counts are based on the square footage of the building. So it depends on which configuration we have here, but um, let's see, did I put them on each slide? So on each plan, the parking requirements, it's basically one parking space for every 100. So this configuration would be 75 spaces. Yeah, 75. I think it ranges between 75 and then the largest plan is 85. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was just curious whether that would help us think about the interior layout preferences. Yeah, I will go up to a site plan. So 85 parking spaces is, um, I think the last time I looked at this, um, 75 was basically this whole side and then 85, you know, went into this portion a little bit, but that actually doesn't seem right. There's no way that's right, I'm sorry. 
but it is a majority of the parking. So when, when the building's in use for a large event, there is gonna be competing parking. So, you know, in our, in our mind, it, it needs to be scheduled pretty efficiently, um, just knowing that in the summers when incline parking's at its max, that you probably don't wanna have an event at Hiawatha Gardens that is for a thousand people. At least not during the day. Yes. So there, there is some management that, that will come along with basically any option. And we didn't want to introduce too much of that yet. We really just wanted to kind of do this, some layouts and some site concepts and understanding, and then we'll kind of work to narrow and refine. You know, eight concepts is a lot to review, but that that's just, we probably could have done 15, but we, this, this was the eight that we felt like were functional and feasible. Mm -hmm. And we you know we need to refine them down from now. So, you know, every 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 um, revision will probably introduce some. You know, we will introduce more detail and more more data. You know, to the site. Jan, I see your hand up or a virtual hand. Yeah, I think just back to the water bottle refill. Um, if there could even be one outside, I don't know if it would be feasible year round, but I think that would be welcoming to the people who live in Manitou, as well as the multimodal people that are coming through, whether walking or whatever. So it isn't just a drinking fountain that would be lovely. It would be the welcoming refill your water bottle, and maybe we wouldn't get so much plastic on it. Mm -hmm. We, we intend to do it, Jan, absolutely. I think we might even have to, but we, we, we would be foolish to not incorporate as much of those type of amenities in a situation like this as we can. I mean, I'm even, I, I, this, isn't, this isn't having you come up with a task force yet, but I mean, I'm even thinking that, you know, I, I've heard that when they have events and food trucks at Soda Springs Park, you know, the generators all run and it's all loud and it just adds, you know, chaos to the event. You know, we could maybe put ground mounted lockable outlets along the site. So if we do have a food truck event, they could just plug into the outlets, no generators, no noise, no fumes. And then we could have food trucks and have a nice experience. So, I mean, you know, those type of, of amenities, those, you know, once we kind of get the site layout, those details, you know, those will be the fun ones where it's like picking out your house, you know, like what kind of tile do you want? Okay, I think, Ann, maybe your, your hand was up next. Thanks. Um, I wanted to just cast my vote for the bathrooms being on the north side. I think that that um, is a great idea, especially for people who are just at the park and not using this as a transit hub, again, just from that residential perspective. Um, I also think it's frankly just easier for the people in the parking lot to access as well. So that's a plus. And um, I'm also want to go on the record as saying I am not a fan of this place having a thousand person or 900, 960 person capacity. Um, I think four to 500 sounds great. Um, I think a thousand people coming in for special events on a regular basis is going to turn into a traffic and parking nightmare. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. Okay, uh, Julia, I think I see your hand up still. Yeah, um, I, I was going to vote for the 4C for I don't like the idea of having a thousand people. I don't, I don't see an event that we've ever um, been able to promote that many people coming in for a concert or whatever. And it does seem excessive to have something that large in Manitou when there's, uh, I, I just, I like the smaller event size. Okay, thank you. Okay. Be Becca says we don't have a thousand person venue in town. We do have a 500 person venue. Great to have that capacity if needed. I think that um, 
you know, the number escapes my head, but we're, we're very similar in size to City Hall, actually. Um, and their capacity, I know I've seen it marked on their wall, was between 400 and 500. I had the number memorized last, like two weeks ago, but it's escaped me. But it can, it can hold about the same number of folks. Um, but the opportunity here was to add the large restrooms to have this at max capacity. But, um, but if that comparison is helpful, they're, they're very similar in size as far as the dance hall to uh, Memorial Hall. Yeah, and, and you know, we all know this, but this site is unique because it serves such a variety of different customers. I mean, when you come to Memorial Hall, you are a customer of Memorial Hall at that moment. When you come to Hiawatha, you might be parking to go walk downtown. You might be parking to use this Hiawatha um, community space. You might be coming off your bike and wanting a place to relax. You might, you know, uh, and so it's it's been challenging to try to meet the needs of the variety of customers. You know, I mean, there are people that, because this is this is where the buses also transition. So there are people that ride Route 33 to here, get off, and then hop on Route 3 to go elsewhere and vice versa. So it um, there's just a variety of customers that need to need and want to use this space. Okay. While there's no more questions, or Julia, your hand is still up. Is that just a hangover question or is that um, a new question? No, I, th I thought I told it to go away. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, just for the sake of about out of time here, um, I think we've gone through the presentation as we wanted to. We greatly appreciate everyone attending and the, and the conversation. I hope you can acknowledge, um, I mean, this, now, granted, BBH and DHM have helped us, but you know the the community-led task force, which are all volunteers, have really carried the baton this far. And Ed and his team are lucky because we kind of got the ball to the 95-yard line, and then they get to carry it across the end zone, and everyone celebrates them. Um, so just <laughs> make sure you thank your task force volunteer. They really have. I mean, we we've been meeting a lot, and uh, it's been great. So. There's a link to the Google chat or the Google form. Um, it's lengthy, so give yourself a few minutes to think through it and, and remind yourself of your preferences. And then with that, is there anything else I'm missing? Um, put, the, put the link in the chat so we can copy it. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna try to do. I had it in a window on my computer, but that window is, is buried somewhere. <laughs> Does anybody well, else have would... that link? Oops, Emily is not here anymore. I have it. I have it, Jennifer. Oh, Give me one second. You are here. I didn't see your lovely face. That up. Thank you. As, they yeah. were, as they're putting that up, I would just add, we're going to collect, BVH will collect every comment we get and We'll keep a record of every comment. We'll summarize those comments, but um, all the comments will eventually be on the website. Everything will be totally transparent. You can see what people said at this meeting and what people said will say at the March 30th meeting. So um, stay tuned. We'll let you know when everything's posted on the website. And speaking of the March 30th meeting, we expect it to be very similar to this, same content, same presentation. Um, our goal was to that people can attend one or the other. So um, it should be just like this one. So you won't be missing anything. And then real quick before y'all leave, if I could have Jan, if Joyce, she's not still there, Mary Ellen and Julia, please shoot me your email address. And you can do that in the chat where you hit to Emily and then it won't go to everyone. Thank you all so much for attending and for your comments. Really appreciate the feedback. And again, for the task force for, for getting us 95% of the way here. They've done a lot of work. Yes, I'll, I'll echo that too, uh, Jennifer. Uh, the uh, Manitou Springs is lucky to have this task force. They. Uh, 
Uh, they've been incredibly thorough. We, uh, and I don't mean dole for this to sound patronizing, but uh, it's sincere. Um, this, this, uh, this whole effort comes from a place of community and, and of passion. And um, uh, it's been a joy to work with this group. So thank you for letting us be a part of it. Okay, the link is posted in the chat. So grab it, when it while it's up. And again, everyone, thank you so much. We're right on time. Have a great evening. Drive safe. <laughs> Thanks, Dole. Thanks for, <laughs> someone laughed at it. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> hey Jennifer, give me two seconds so I can get those emails from the chat. Okay. <laughs> and honestly, I have everyone's name down. So if their mm -hmm. email is close to their name, I should yeah. it should be okay. Okay. Um, and the chat will get exported. Okay. Okay. If you'll email that to me. I will. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I don't even know if anything, if any comments were even covered in the breakout rooms that we're going to need to capture. No, not all ours. Back together. Okay. Yeah, not ours. Okay. Thank you for all your work. Thanks. It was great. <laughs> I <Good> know. Job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you too. Okay, bye. Bye.